Uh, my dear students, now we are going to start chapter on forging. As you are aware, this uh, technology of metal forming processes includes forging processes, rolling processes and others. Next, we would show you the uh, slides of for the different processes, but in this lecture of uh, forging that will continue maybe 6, 7 lectures more to cover the, the whole course content that has been listed on the e-content course. We are going to start the topics like uh, the different types of forging process and the products that we can manufacture with the help of these processes, a little bit historical backgrounds and others. So, if you recall back the first lecture where we covered the broad aspect of the whole course and the, the, the role of technological aspect of metal forming as we have already seen the mechanics of metal forming. So, the mechanics part we have already covered. So, we are now in the process of technological processes to deal with. So, as you are aware of uh, the course which the forging now we are going to start is starting with the introduction and all that different processes of the forging and uh, 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 many other miscellaneous processes or unconventional processes of forging. Die design part, uh, the forgeability aspects uh, especially for cold and hot forging, the forming equipments, forming defects, forging defects and uh, closed die forging and all other things we are going to start with. So, as you are aware of uh, the fundamental of forming processes that when you apply load on to some work piece, so that it exceeds the elastic limit and the the load becomes sufficient for the plastic deformation. So, in case of forging where we, we come across some work piece and we can forge the simplest form if you recall the draft forging. You can see here this figure, this is the simplest uh, video of uh, draft forging uh, where very simple black smith operation is being shown. So, usually you can classify a forging process in two major as a cold forging and hot forging. The cold forging is generally performed on two work piece when the, the, the deformation is not very large and you require less load the work piece is also smaller. Where we go for uh, hot forging, where the heavy deformation is required and the work piece size is bigger and you require heavy load using some kind of uh, hammers, heavy hammers, power hammers or presses like uh, hydraulic presses, screw presses and all those things. So, 
we call the forging process a massive bulk forming process because when we concern with the hot forging and you know the forging of uh, hot forging especially you carry out above 0.75 tm the basic a very crude uh, way to have the temperature of the hot under hot forging process that it should be around 0.75 uh, multiplied by the 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 melting temperature of the workpiece material so usually if you look at this uh, a uh, slide where you have the classification of forging say you have a closed die forging where you closed die forging with flash without flash also it can be then coining process is also a kind of forging process electro upsetting process forward extrusion process so forward extrusion forging we call it not so forward extrusion forging backward extrusion forging hobbing is a very popular uh, forging process isothermal forging where we forge the work piece under uniform temperature conditions so that's the isothermal forging nosing process is also a category of forging process open die forging rotatory forging or it is also called as arbit uh, arbitral forging uh, then the precision forging a different class of forging when we call it as a precision forging the metal powder forging where we start with powder metal we make compacts we sinter it and then we forge so these sequence are integral and in a sequence so that is how we call it as a powder uh, metal powder forging radial forging upsetting etc there are many such processes there are a class we, which we call as uh, unconventional forging process we would deal later so starting with this uh, the open die forging or hand forging that the very beginning one can uh, expect uh, as the uh, the black smith forging so in case of open die forging as the name indicates the forging are made with the help of repeated blow uh, in a open die here the operator or the worker uh, manipulates the work piece in the die during the blow process similar to the traditional manufacturing processes which is uh, used by a blacksmith if you recall there is another class which we say it as a impression die forging or precision forging as i said so uh, these forgings are the refined form of blocker forgings blocker forging means the a block will have a number of impression on that and uh, the forging passes from one impression to the another impression on the same block so the impression die forging or precision forging which we call uh, is a refined form of the blocker forging the finished metal part uh, it is much more identical to the die impression forging the other class which is very popular in forging is uh, upset forging so these forgings increases the cross sectional area by reducing the length of the workpiece metal the process is generally used to make heads on valves bolts and fasteners and other similar parts uh, generally if you see as far as the specification is concerned uh, the the forging process which is used on metals all these processes that we have mentioned these metals must have a good ductility first requirement 
that the metals whatever metals we are going to forge must have a good ductility such as like uh, you may you choose a copper, aluminum, nickel, steel and magnesium. So, that has a very good ductility. Uh, the minimizing size, the material volume and complexity of the uh, uh, design can also reduce the cost of further. So, if the size is smaller or bigger, the material volume is bigger or lower and the complexity of the shape complexity of the force component uh, will reduce the die cost as well and therefore, it will reduce the cost total cost of uh, forging or the component uh, produced by forging operations. Usually, if you look at this, this is a press which is a uh, power press and there is a controller. So, this uh, it uses a drop kind of uh, operation. As far as the varieties of parts are concerned in drop forging, one can see here this slide where you, you might have come across the connecting rods, various types of connecting rods, crankshafts, wrenches, hooks etcetera that require very high strength and uh, toughness. So, all these components are basically produced by forging process and that too the open die forging or closed die forging or combination of these. You know for all kind of forging process, the die design is very important. In nutshell, when you design a die for uh, different complex shapes, you must avoid the undercuts in the die design. Uh, usually a draft of uh, external draft of around 6 degree is preferred and uh, the internal draft of around 8 to 10 degree is preferred and uh, proper fillets and corner radii uh, uh, so as to flow the material without any difficulty is also required. And uh, the whole die must have a proper support in the form of webs and ribs, so that it has a good strength because it has to suffer very heavy load during the forging process. So, usually a die designer what it does depending on the type of forging it is to be forged, when he thinks of the die design keeping these guidelines which I mentioned, uh, the die design process starts with a blueprint. So, one can make the the master die first and then uh, out of that a plaster cast is made from the master die for approval usually uh, by a group of designer and uh, experience uh, soft floor worker. After the plaster cast has been um, approved, the forging dies are made and then it is properly uh, heat treated and uh, that is starts with the master die as a pattern. A bar stock is generally chosen for the manufacture of forgings. The complicated forging dies are will have certain mountings it is uh, and then it is mounted in a hammer of a sufficient size to form the forging. Usually, the bar stock is cut into lengths appropriate to the dimensions of the uh, workpiece material for the forging and then the length of the material are heated if it is heat uh, hot forming in the forging furnace. So, this is the uh, usual way and uh, then each length is pulled uh, from the forging furnace, 
by the hammer man using tong uh, and uh, it is placed in the blocker area of the forging die. We would see what is a blocker. The hammer is then activated for several blows as uh, I had shown you the slight a hammer power hammer there. And after that the rough formed forging is moved to the, the finisher area of the forging die. The hammer is again activated once again for several blows, so that the final uh, dimensions are achieved. At this point, the forging is fully formed, but it still has a flash attached to it. So, this flash is the excess material around the form forging. The forged piece is then uh, the flash is, is removed from the forging dies by a uh, trim man, we call it as a trim man and uh, it is placed in a trim press. A few blows are again necessary to remove the flash from the forging. And thus the complicate, uh, totally completed forging is then placed in a cooling bin. The cooling bin may contain liquid to empty with are uh, uh, having a certain specification provided on the blueprint supplied. And once the workpiece after forging is cooled, the forgings are placed in a uh, wheel uh, boater uh, with the steel shot uh, to clean off the scales and uh, discolorization uh, which is formed in the forging process. And you can look it here the sum of the steps which is shown mentioned here. So, this is the what say a usual sequence of forging, especially hot forging. Usually any forged metal uh, can result in certain uh, points that one can mention here. So, any forged metal can result into number one increase in length, decrease in cross section and this is what is called as a drying out of the metal. So, it can result into drying of the out of the metal, it can decrease in length, it can increase in cross section and this is what is called as the upsetting process. So, decrease in length and increase in cross section is called as upsetting and increase in length, decrease in cross section is called as drying out. And it may result change in length, change in cross section by squeezing and uh, just like the process which is in impression dies, this result in favorable grain flow for the, the strong part. So, squeezing um, in closed impression dies is also very uh, uh, for better uh, strength is required. Uh, if we look back the, the different issues of metal forming industries. We find that there is a lack of experienced metal forming engineers, because the metal forming techniques, metal forming knowledge, uh, it, it comes through experience, it comes through design experience, it comes to practice experience and all that. So, we find that there is a lack of experienced people, especially the, the forming engineers, metal forming engineers. And uh, also, uh, there is a demand for the short product life cycle products. The new metallic materials are getting gen uh, developed and uh, there is still uh, development of new hybrid processes therefore, to meet these requirements. Also, the high accuracy and small feature of the products etcetera, these are some of the current issues of the metal forming industries that are passing through. 
and uh, so uh, as far as if you look at this uh, some of the products uh, where the precision cold force products are shown now you can see the complexity of the the forgings and very precisely produced as far as the dimension is concerned as far as the quality is concerned these are very important issues so you look at this this is what is the cold forge products so cold forge as i told you uh, it is done at around the room temperature and uh, it requires very heavy load for deformation but the precision the tolerances uh, that is uh, obtained as well as the surface finish is very good as compared to the hot forging products usually uh, smaller components are preferred you can look at the very complicated shapes here similarly uh, there are another category which we call it the precision hot forging of the complex shape you can see these are produced by hot forging which is precisely made like these gears bevel gears and all those things which have got a very complex shapes in it so this shows the uh, the forging capability under cold as well as hot forging if you go back as the historical development of the materials because the forging process development has been coupled with the different types of material development so that is how today as the new materials uh, light materials uh, are being developed we require a different varieties of forging processes to deal with uh, if you remember the egypt uh, around uh, th 3100 bc to 300 bc where uh, around uh, one can say around 400 4000 bc uh, in egypt uh, the the metals that developed as the gold copper and uh, meteoritic iron and uh, that was using only the hammering processes so a very early starting of the forging process which was uh, hammering then in greece also there has been around 4000 to 3000 bc uh, generally uh, uh, copper castings stone and metal molds uh, loss wax processes silver and all these things uh, developed and uh, that case the stamping and uh, of jewelry generally it was being produced so jewelry by stamping process it was used in greece uh, around uh, there has been report like roman empire which lasted around 500 bc to 476 ad then the middle age around 476 to 1492 and uh, renaissance period when the 1400 to 16th centuries these all cover the the early days of uh, material development and uh, if you see the bronze casting uh, the the cast iron and cast steel stampings of coins that around developed around 1000 to 1 bc and uh, uh, zinc steels was another material which was very popular for armor and coinage uh, forging and the steel swords was also very uh, common during 1 AD to 1000 AD and uh, when the blast furnace developed for producing metals and castings of the bells and powder uh, around 1000 to 1500 AD and then the processes that was the wire drying of uh, gold and silver smith work smithing so 
it is all very uh, early stages of the historical development of related to forging. Uh, the second phase when the industrial revolution took place that was around 1750 to 1850. So, uh, if you look at this, the uh, where the cast iron cannon and tin plate was developed for uh, and uh, the processes that use the water uh, power uh, for the metal working was used because the water uh, and then ro rolling mill for uh, coinage etcetera was also used. And uh, then 1600 to 1700 AD, then 1700 to 1800 AD and 1800 to 1900 AD. It shows this stable the developments in you know, uh, metal forming processes like uh, the rolling, the uh, shape rolling, extrusion, deep drying and all those things. So, I am not going in details of this, because the forging we are concerning now. If you look at this, the modern age, where the world war 1 and world war 2 afterward, that is 1980 to 1920 and then uh, till today 1980 is where 1950 to uh, 1960 is called as the space age, where most of the ceramic materials and modular uh, iron developed, semiconductors uh, and continuous casting process developed. So, uh, this shows this table a little bit the modern age uh, development of materials. Now, if you look at the, the 1970 to 1980s, where the compacted graphites, vacuum casting, and the originally bonded sand automation of the uh, the molding process and all that occurred. If you see there, there the forging, especially the precision forging, isothermal forging, super plastic forging, die design for uh, by analytical method also developed, and net safe forging or farming was very popular around 1970 to 80s. So. With this, now let us see this slide, where you have a power hammer. This power hammer is actuated by your foot. So, you can actuate the stroke of the power hammer and on the right hand side, it is a bigger around more than 1 meter and uh, around uh, uh, half inch diameter. Uh, casting, uh, it is being forged, that is hot forged. So, on the right side, it is, it can be rotated. So, this is a very uh, good example for showing you a drop hammer forging by power operation. So, it is a power driven hammer. So, that is how it is also called as the power hammer forging. So, in forging, if we take the open die forging, what happens if the diameter of work piece or billet is taken as D, height is H. So, you have two platens, upper platen and lower platen. So, it has, if you apply load, so you reduce the diameter, uh, uh, you increase the diameter and you reduce the height of the forging. So, you forge it. So, number of blows will go on doing, will go on reducing the height and will go on, you, you can mark here, there is a barreling in the middle. It happens because the, the die interfaces, the platen that is interfaced with the work piece has a friction. So, the move deformation as the friction boundaries are less at the two ends and therefore, and the where the free end at the middle it will uh, expand more and that is how we get the barrel shape here. So, if you look at the diameter d, it reduces d 1 and then d 2 and that is how a very simple uh, open die forging of a disc or this case shows the impression die forging process operation 
where you have now in the previous case the upper plate and lower plate did not had any impression. Now, here you have impression. These impressions are part partially in upper die and the, in the partially in the lower die. So, one by one blows are there and the, the these uh, impression will get filled in subsequent operation you can see here. So, the last one uh, the whole impression is filled and the flash comes out that is how we call it as the impression die forging. So, you look at this one where we have a forward extrusion forging where it reduces the slug diameter and increases its length to produce parts such as step shafts and cylinder etcetera you can see here. So, it is a it is an example of forward extrusion forging. In the second figure it shows the backward extrusion forging where the steel blows uh, back and around the uh, descending punch to form cup shaped pieces like here. And this is a very good example where you produce bum cell. So, you make bum cell where you put the uh, explosives and close the other end and uh, that is very popular for. Uh, and the third one which is the upsetting or heading process uh, where a common technique it is a upsetting or heading is a common technique uh, for making fasteners. Uh, gathers steels uh, in the head and other sections along the length of the part. All right. So you can see here the it's a being again and the head comes into. Mostly the bolt heads are produced very often with this process. Now look at this figure where you have a impression uh, die block. You see in this block the upper portion of the block and the lower portion of the block have got number of uh, impressions. And uh, these impressions uh, are very arranged in a very particular manner depending on the design, the part to be produced. So, this figure shows the impression die forging. Uh, and the corresponding product uh, that results from each impression. It is it passes from one impression to the another impression and finally, this is an example of uh, um, connecting rod where you have. So, you see you start with the number one impression, impression number one where it is on the right side. So, you you have started with the billet round billet you put you get the one and then after one the one uh, the work piece one is again kept at like a location two. So, you get a two impression two you get the three four five. So, the five you get the last one fifth one the impression number five which is the finishing one and after that you have to trim and all that and that is what this is the final product you are going to get it. So, this is what shows an impression die block having two. These die block depending on the complexity of shape it may have in two piece it may have in more than two piece. We have seen a die block having three or four pieces also in case of a very complex. So, usually in two piece the the bottom die uh, remains stationary and the upper die it moves along with the press or hammer or whatsoever and that is how the speed is generally slower here this die block is mostly used in case of hot forging so if you see that this is what one can produce uh, a connecting rod um, having mold with a main bearing hole in its large end. So, as to the metal flow runs uh, along the, uh, the connecting rods entire body 
and uh, with use of special materials one can succeed in producing the uh, the connecting rod with extreme intensity and durability so you see here uh, the base product and then you can also produce hole the you can mark the the flow of the metal during the impression and that's how the flow is very good and that gives very high strength to the forged materials. This is another example, which is very popular example used in most of the houses where the hinge. So, this is a door hinge assembly. So, you can see the forging process is used as the hot impression die and the size is around 120 inch. Now, uh, mm length weight is around 0.8 pound or kg, 0.8 kg, and generally of aluminium it is having tensile strength as uh, 480 mega Pascal, yield strength as 415 uh, mega Pascal. After uh, you forge, then you require secondary operations like machining and assembly because it is in two piece and then after you require some kind of heat treatment for an example for this case T73511 heat treatment is carried out then you require certain surface treatment like powder coating and all that and uh, this consists of two piece forging for making the assembly that is the door hinge assembly and uh, Usually, you can also produce with casting, but the quality of the cast door hinge is very lower than the forged one and uh, it has a very great demand and uh, that is how uh, I thought to show you the complex shape of forging. If you see the 